we can all perform at 90 percent but you want people to get to a hundred and to get to a hundred you have to be inspired by something you have to be working for some greater cause there has to be some reason for doing it that's beyond the just being excellent at something that's about leaving the world better than we found it and so that's our gravitational pull that's our north star Hello, I'm Tim Cook, and I'm going to talk about the five things that inspire me. One of the main things that inspires me are customer notes. I religiously look at customer notes every morning, starting around uh, 5 a.m. or so. If you're in the business like we are of creating technology that really enriches people's lives, you want to know what it's doing. You want to know how people are feeling about it. I get some of the most heartwarming notes. I got one uh, just this morning where a driver of a car went into a seizure. And because they had the iPhone 14, the crash detection detected the crash and called immediately for help when they couldn't do it themselves. These are just phenomenal notes of, of people telling about technology and what it will do for them and, and, and specifically what Apple products have done for them. Of course, I get some complaints as well. And those are cool too. I want to stay grounded in terms of what our users are thinking, what they're feeling. It's a great way to start the morning. National parks inspire me. National parks are like this palate cleanser for the mind. And I love to go out and hike Yosemite and Glacier and Zion. They were called America's best idea, and I agree with that. It gives you a chance to really reflect on the space between the notes. For a moment, you feel so small. Your place in the world seems so small. It's, it sets a great perspective. How often do you go? Uh, not often enough, but it's my summer vacation. Everybody else goes to foreign countries or something. I always go to the National Park, and it's egalitarian. They're for all of us. Places like this are just a jewel to go and sort of disconnect from the, from the world for a while and really reflect on what's important. How able are you to disconnect when you actually go out there? Well, in the National Parks, you're disconnected because there's no cell coverage, <laughs> and so you're you're pretty disconnected. There are over 60 national parks out there. I would encourage everyone to go check one of them out. Once you go to one, you'll want to go to all of them. You know, the team that I work with at Apple are some of the brightest people in the world, and they push me to think about things differently. You know, to push me to look at something from a different lens, debate me on topics. And I love this. I think it's a very necessary component to stay inspired. I mean, having somebody push you to push your thinking, to tell you that you're wrong, to tell you there's another way to look at it, there's another lens that you should view a issue by, these are jewels. These are things that we should all be happy for, not not sad that somebody's disagreeing with us. You wind up with one plus one equal three when you're with a really great team. You, it's amazing what you can accomplish. I really mean the entire Apple team. You know, I can go out in a retail store and the retail teams inspire me. So whether I'm in a store or I'm working in the office, it's the entire team. How do you keep your team inspired? Well, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I try to do the same thing with them that they do with me, which is push them to look at something differently. Make sure that I'm recognizing them for their contributions. All the things that, that you would say is sort of a, a good leader would do, I really try hard to do. Have there been times in your life where you felt you were lacking inspiration? Oh, there have been times in my life where I felt aimless. Before joining Apple, I was in a funk not really knowing what my purpose in life was. And it, it really took coming to Apple for all of that to change. There was a voice in the back of my head that was saying, go west, young man, go west. And I talked to Steve and, and loved him and wanted to work for him and around him. It was the single most important decision in my life. 
I love sports. Sports definitely inspire me. You know, that, that last minute touchdown, that last basket right at the buzzer. You feel some of the best of people in sport because people for at least a few minutes drop their politics and their other things that divide people and they're just all into the game. I remember growing up, I would listen to the Auburn, Alabama game, which is called the Iron Bowl on the radio before it was on TV. Oh, this would be some of the most exciting calls and games that, that I participated in. A few years later, I would be going to college and going to every game. And then uh, now more recently, I actually talked to the team before the game. They won that game, so it was <laughs> fortunately. Young people really inspire me. I think you need to work with people from all different ages because people can inspire us that are 12 years old and 20 years old and 90 years old and 100 years old. I don't believe in staying to your, to your peer group, so to speak. I look at the younger generation and I see a group that are not married to the old dogmas of my generation. They don't accept that things can't be a certain way because they were never that way. They want to change the world. I visited Beirut with Malala and it was the most incredible round table that we had with a group of refugees. She wants to help a hundred million girls get an education that are denied education today because of their gender. And I think she will do it and we're going to help her. I look at people like that that just won't accept things as they are. I get very excited about it, whether it's the environment or human rights or, or just treating people with dignity and respect. I grew up in the 60s and the early 70s is when during some of my formative years. And I grew up with heroes like Dr. Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy, people that were really pushing the boundaries on human rights in just trying to build a more just world where everyone is treated with dignity and respect. Do you think about the way you present yourself knowing that young people also look up to you as a leader and as someone to model themselves after? Yes, definitely. I had young people reaching out to me back in uh, the uh, 2010, 2011 and so that had read on the internet that I was gay and it and they were on the verge of, of of making terrible life decisions of suicide and so forth because they were being pushed out by their families and friends and really, really wrenching stories. And I decided uh, then that it was, that the best thing that I could do was to be clear about myself. It was the uh, catalyst for me writing the essay that I did in 2014.